Now on BBC One at six o'clock, the news with Rita Chakrabarti. Today at six, Lucy Letby will never be released from prison as the judge imposes multiple whole life sentences after she murdered seven babies and tried to kill six more. Letby refused to attend court, leading one bereaved parent to brand her a coward as well as wicked. The judge addressed her in her absence. Loving parents have been robbed of their cherished children and others have to live with the physical and mental consequences of your actions. Siblings have been deprived of brothers and sisters. You have caused deep psychological trauma. Tonight we'll hear at length from the judge and the parents whose babies were attacked on what has been an extraordinary day in court. Also on the programme. Good evening. The serial killer Lucy Letby will never be released from prison after the judge at Manchester Crown Court jailed her for life for each of the murders of seven babies and the attempted murder of six more at the Countess of Chester Hospital over a period of just over 12 months. The 33-year-old former nurse refused to appear in court today, prompting the mother of two of her victims to describe it as a final act of wickedness from a coward. The courtroom today was the scene of deep grief and trauma as the families of her victims gave harrowing statements, telling of the horror and pain of losing their babies, some dying in their parents' arms. Our correspondent Judith Moritz has been in court throughout this trial and was there for us today. Judith. Yes, and I've never felt an atmosphere before quite like that inside courtroom number seven here today. The moment of Lucy Letby's sentencing was historic, but uh, because she is, is only the fourth woman ever to be given a whole life tariff. But that wasn't the predominant feeling. Rather, that was a palpable sense of loss, of deep sadness and of anguish. She'll never be free again. So depraved, so wicked, Lucy Letby will be in prison forever. Today, the courtroom reeled as the raw human cost of her crimes was laid bare. Parent after parent told of the impact of Letby's brutality. One clutched a toy rabbit, another wore a pendant with her baby's hand and footprints on it, which she said made her feel conflicted because the nurse had taken them. And as they spoke, you could hear the sound of weeping around the courtroom, including from the jury. They spoke about seeing their babies suffer and that they'd live with the trauma forever. The mother of baby C said, knowing his murderer was watching us was like something out of a horror story. The father of baby O described his son's skin colour changing rapidly. He said it wasn't normal to the naked eye. It was horrific to see and something he'd never forget. He said his son was quickly christened and moments later, he was gone. The mother of baby I said, I don't think we'll ever get over the fact that our daughter was tortured till she had no fight left in her. We heard harrowing detail about the effect the baby's deaths have had on their parents' mental health. Some have had breakdowns Others have needed medication or turned to alcohol. Two said they'd considered suicide. They spoke about their loss. The mother of baby D said, we had to organize her funeral. The service took place the day before her due date. Baby G has been left severely disabled as a result of Letby's attacks. Her parents said, she'll never have a sleepover with a best friend or go to high school never have her first kiss, have a boyfriend or get married. In her absence, Lucy Letby was sentenced to 13 whole life tariffs. This was a cruel, calculated and cynical campaign of child murder involving the smallest and most vulnerable of children. There was a deep malevolence bordering on sadism in your actions. You have no remorse. There are no mitigating factors. In their totality, the offences of murder and attempted murder were of exceptionally high seriousness and just punishment, according to law, requires a whole life order. The mother of twin babies, E and F, 
said that the trial had felt like a platform for Letby to relive her crimes, but that failing to show her face today had been one final act of wickedness from a coward. The family's statements will be sent to Letby. The mother of babies A and B said, you thought it was your right to play God with our children's lives. We heard about memories being forever tarnished. Baby P's mother said, I hate the fact that Lucy Letby was the last person to hold him. She's destroyed our lives. Having refused to come up from the cells for the hearing, Letby was driven away from court, leaving grief, distress and fury in her wake. <coughs> Judith Moritz, BBC News, Manchester. Well, as Judith just said there, let be refused to appear in court for her sentencing. Our home editor, Mark Easton, is here with me. And Mark, there are plans to change the law on this to compel convicts to attend sentencing. Yes, Lucy Letby's refusal to listen to the statements from her victims' families represents a disrespect for their feelings, which clearly demands a response, a political response, and all the major political parties are agreed something needs to be done. But what? A judge already has the power to require an offender to attend the dock. Prison officers already have the power to use reasonable force to make that happen. What a judge cannot do is ask them to use whatever force is necessary. And that's because you can imagine you could create a very volatile, dangerous situation for custody officers, and they themselves actually might become liable for legal action if they overstep their powers during the course of that. And then dragging a recalcitrant offender kicking and screaming into the dock. You can imagine the scene that there would be. Suddenly the focus in the courtroom would be all on the victim, all on the villain, and not on the victims. The very opposite of what the campaigners say they want to happen. Now, one idea is that you could, where a prisoner refuses to leave a cell, kind of broadcast the court statements into the cell. That, I'm told, is technically difficult and could be very expensive. Um, you could increase sentences, but of course, in Lucy Letby's case, she's got a whole life order, so you can't go any further. Could you perhaps tell the prison to treat her harshly? Well, judges don't have a power to do that, and of course, prisons, that might disrupt the management of the prison. So while many agree that villains, you know, must be, villains must hear what their victims have to say, attempts to achieve that may have unintended consequences for the courts, for the prisons, and yes, victims too. Mark, many thanks. Let's go back now to Judith Moritz, who is at Manchester Crown Court. And Judith, you've followed this trial over the past 10 months. And this isn't the end of these dreadful events. No, the government says its independent inquiry will investigate the wider circumstances of what happened at the Countess of Chester Hospital, including whether the regulators uh, did or didn't uh, do the right thing. But by any measure, what's happened here appears to be uh, it, to involve serious failings by the former management at that hospital. There has been criticism particularly of the former chief executive Tony Chambers, the former medical director Ian Harvey. They have both said that they will cooperate fully with that inquiry. Today we heard that the former director of nursing Alison Kelly has been suspended from her current NHS job. She has been approached for comment but is yet to respond. And in terms of other um, things which are still going on, apart from that inquiry, well, uh, the prosecution have until the 15th of September to decide whether or not to apply for a retrial on some of the attempted murder charges that the jury was unable to decide on here. And Cheshire Police say they are continuing with their investigation, looking at the possibility that Letby could yet be charged with further offences. This is not the last we've heard of Britain's most prolific baby killer. Judith, thank you very much. Judith Moritz reporting there. And if you've been affected by this story or need advice or support, there's plenty available on the BBC's Action Line pages or you can call free on 08000 155 998.